Hello YouTube! I hope you're having a wonderful day. In today's video, we're going to discuss the Word 2016 exam. Specifically, we're going to look at the category called Creating Tables and Lists. Overall, this accommodates for about 20 to 25% of the exam. I'll go ahead and throw a graphic up of what the exam page says that you need to know just so you can see it. The category says that we need to know how to create tables, modify a table, and create and modify a list. In today's video, we're not going to discuss creating and modifying a list only because I've covered that already in another video. I'll go ahead and post a link to that in the description and I'll put a card up so you can easily access that. Let's go ahead and jump into Word. Let's go ahead and look at creating a table. There are a few ways you're gonna be asked to do this on the exam. One way it could ask you to create a table is just by specifying a number of columns and rows, and then you manually create a table and build it out with the text. To do that, we wanna to go to the Insert tab here at the top. We're in the Tables group. We wanna click the Tables dropdown, and then in this section, you can just put your cursor over however many it wants you to do. Note that columns run up and down, in rows go left to right so if it says have four columns and two rows well you would know four by two here I'll go ahead and select that let's look at some text that i already have here in this document another way you might be asked to create a table is to have a group of text and then convert that text to a table to do that what you want to do is start at the very beginning of your data and then just click and drag all the way to the bottom of your data set. You want to be careful here not to go too far. If you look at where my cursor is now, I've selected three lines that I do not need, and it's going to mess up my table if I have this selected. You want to make sure that you only have selected the text that you need. From here, you want to go to the Insert tab here at the top. We're in the Tables group. We want to click the Tables dropdown, and what we want to do is select Convert Text to Table. In this section, it's going to ask you the number of columns. Had I selected those three extra lines, it would have said one here, and it tells us the number of rows. This should automatically set the correct values by default if you select your stuff correctly. The autofit behavior is often overlooked. In the task on the exam, you want to read carefully because it could tell you to have it autofit to content or autofit to window, but by default, it's fixed columns and width. And then you also want to look here, separate text at paragraph, tabs, commas, and other. If you miss this section here, it's okay. You can go back and change it after you've created the table. We'll go ahead and select OK. And notice it went ahead and it built that table for us. Something else you might be asked to do is the opposite of what we've done. And instead of converting text to table, converting a table to text. To do that, we have the table selected. We're on the Table Tools Layout tab. And what we want to do is go to the data group and select convert to text. And then it'll ask us separate text where it'll tell you in the task and we'll click OK. And notice it just went ahead and it reversed what we have done. I'm going to go ahead and hit Control Z just to bring it back to a table because there's some things we want to look at. On the exam with tables, you're going to be asked a lot of questions that deal with design and layout. To have the ability to make those changes, you want to have your cursor somewhere within the table so that you get the table tools design and layout tab. On the design tab, we have a lot of table style options that we can check and uncheck. And as you check and uncheck these, notice that the styles will change accordingly. Some of it just has a line, some of it changes some of the banding. So you might be asked to modify some of the table styles. You're most likely going to be asked to modify the, the style of the table. Right now it's pretty bare. But in this section, if I click this drop down here, I have plain tables, grid tables, and list tables. You want to pay close attention to this. It'll preface it in the question which type of style it is. And then from there, it'll make it a little bit easier. So if it says list table three accent five, you can click that. Let's do something that we can see just a little bit better. We'll do grid table five dark. So you want to be familiar with those sections. Then you have some other sections over here, but the main priority is probably going to be here on the design tab. We also want to look at the layout here. The website says something we might be asked to do is to sort our table. Currently, it's sorted by the area code. When I sort a table, something I like to do is to just select this little box up here because what it does, it selects the entire table and it's going to make it a little bit easier when I click sort. So we're on the table tools layout tab. We're in the data group. I want to click sort here. 
right now it's selected by area code. I want to change that. We'll select state. We'll keep the text and we'll keep it ascending and we'll click OK. And notice it went ahead and it sorted our data for us by state instead of by area code. Something else you might be asked to do is to modify a cell, the dimensions of the cell, or maybe a column width or a row height. That's going to be on our table tools layout tab. We're going to find those settings in the cell size group. Now, something you might be asked to do is maybe you missed it on the original dialog box, but auto fit contents, auto fit window, auto fit width. Let me go ahead and select contents just so you can kind of see how it shrinks it down to the contents within the cell. But maybe you need to be more specific. We can modify just a column by hand keying any of that information here. We can also click this cell size dialog box here, and that's going to give us a lot of options in our table properties dialog box. So we can go row and specify the height column. We can specify the width. Of course, we can do the cell size, the vertical alignment, which can also be found in this section here, top, center, bottom. You can add all text. That's probably a question on the certification test you're going to be asked to do. So note that. But on our table tab, something I want you to see, because it's listed on the website, is if you click options here, you have the default cell margins. The website says you need to be able to change the cell margins. This is where you do it. And so you want to make sure you're familiar with these settings. Another thing that the website tells us that we need to be able to do is to merge and split cells. This is not so bad. What I'm going to do is go ahead and insert above a cell. And notice it doesn't, it's hard to see, but that's actually four different cells here. But let's say I wanted to give a, a name to this table. I don't want four cells here. With those four cells selected, I'm on the Table Tools Layout tab. If I click Merge Cells, that is now one cell. Then I could put in area codes or area code table. And then we, we talked about the alignment. We could center that in the mid section of the cell. Now that I've done that, maybe I didn't like that. Maybe I wanted that just to cover this section here. What I could do is with that cell selected, unmerge what we've done, we can split the cells. It asks me number of columns, we can do two, but I can also split this up in the number of rows as well. So be familiar with splitting the cells. I want to look at splitting our table. Maybe I want to split the table after Florida. So if I put my cursor here in this row, I went ahead and selected that. If I go to the merge group here and click split table, notice it went ahead and split the table for us and dropped it on another line. And now we have two different tables with that information. Let me go ahead and undo that because I want you to see one other thing. I'm going to go ahead and delete this as well. You're going to be asked to have a repeater header on different pages. Notice that this table runs to the second page and I want the area code state state code and time zone listed on all pages so that it doesn't matter where I look I always have a header if I select that row I'm on the table tools layout tab I'm in the data group if I click repeat header rows notice that it went ahead and it populated that there something that my students often do is they actually select too much by accident if I do that notice what happens when I hit it this time Word went ahead and placed those headers on the second page. That's more information than what I needed. I caution you, make sure that you only select what you need when you have repeating header rows so that you have the correct information displayed. Thank you for watching this video. My hope always as I create new content is that my viewers feel better able to carry out tasks in Microsoft. If you like the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Let me know that you liked it. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button that way you get a notification when I release my next video. Do you have a suggestion on a video that I should make? Leave a comment below. Let me know what you want me to create. That way I can better help you.